Alright, Richie has a great question comment here. And um, I want to explain it so that if you understand it, you got it forever, right? So first of all, let's read the comment. I was wondering about the transfiguration in Matthew 17 when Peter sees Moses and Elias, which is Elijah, in light of what Jesus says, that no man has ascended. What do you think about that? So uh, in John chapter 3, verse 13, Jesus says, No man has ascended to heaven. Jesus calls it a vision, so maybe they're seeing the future. And I always wondered, how would Peter even know what Moses and Elias look like? That's a great question. I, they just knew, I guess. But I want to focus on this uh, this scenario, if you will, of Matthew 17. And Moses and Elias, or Elijah, appearing to them. So, um, because this is very interesting. I don't think I've ever talked about it. So let me see if I can teach it in a very simple way that we can understand um, what's going on here. You know, what's happening. So if you don't mind, I want to read all three versions, all three books. I don't want to say versions because it's there's not any version of the Bible. There's a King James Bible. That's the Bible. But within the Bible, you have Matthew's account. You got Mark's account. You got Luke's account. So I want to read all three different accounts because they don't all say exactly the same. None of them contradict one another. That's rule number one. The Bible cannot contradict itself. Now... It's interesting because we get clues in one that we don't get in the other, right? So I'm gonna if I'm gonna start in Matthew. I gotta find this real quickly. There it is. Okay. Now let's go to Matthew and uh, start here. So bear with me because this this is very interesting. So bear with me. And after six days, Jesus takes Peter, James, and his John his brother and brings them up to a high mountain apart and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light and behold there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with them or with him excuse me and then Peter then answered Peter and said unto Jesus Lord it is good for us to be here if thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And when he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. That's key. Remember that. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man, save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man, until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elijah is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. All right. So let's, that's, end of the Matthew's account right there all right so uh, if we go back up here I, I want you to pay attention remember this hear ye him so let's read Mark's account and we're gonna see in Luke I believe there's a an additional uh, teaching in there that'll 
give us some more understanding what's going on here. All right, so let's read it again. And after six days, Jesus takes him with Peter, James, and John, and leads them up to a high mountain apart, and he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto them Elijah and with Moses. And they were talking with Jesus. Interesting, huh? And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid. And he didn't know what to say. They were sore. They were frightened. And there were uh, then there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. And suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus only with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen, till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. And they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one with another what the rising from the dead should mean. And they asked him, Why should this, why say the scribes that Elias, Elijah must first come? And he answered and told them, Elijah verily cometh first and restoreth all things, and how it is written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be sought at naught. And I'm sorry, and be set at not. But I say unto you that Elijah is indeed come, and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed, as it is written of him. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway, all the people, oh, excuse me, I, okay, I went too far here. All right, so uh, very good. So let's go to Luke's version. And you're going to notice a detail in here that is not in Matthew and Mark. And behold, they there talked with him two men, which were, oh, wait, hold on a second, where am I at here? And it came to pass, verse 28, and it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, he took Peter, John, James, and went up to the mountain to pray. And he prayed in the fountain, and, and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with them two men, which were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spake of his, of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. So, when Jesus, Moses, and Elijah are standing, talking with one another, they are talking about his decease, the manner in which he should die. And Peter, James, and John, they heard the conversation. And so uh, that conversation was not uh, spoken of until after Jesus rose from the dead. But Peter... And they that were with him were heavy with sleep, and when they were awake, they saw his glory in the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud, and overshadowed them. And they feared as they entered into the cloud... And there came a voice out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone, and they kept it close, and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. And it came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, much people met him. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going too far again. I'm just reading and reading and reading. All right, so let's go back now. Here, let's, since we're originated in Matthew 17, let's go back here. 
we could do this here. No, I want you to notice this here. Ye, him. All right, where can I find this at? there this is my beloved son here him all right then we can go over here and I'll tell you why that's so important so important this is my beloved son here him all right now this is very interesting in my opinion this is to me this makes sense I want you to tell me what you think. So you got Moses, which represents the law. And they heard the law. And you got Eliza, Elijah, Elias, who represents the prophets. They hear the prophets. So they hear the law. They hear the prophets, and now God is speaking to them from the cloud, saying, Hear him. That is Jesus. So you got the law, you got the prophets, and then you got the Christ, Jesus. And the same thing in Mark 9 and Luke 9. Same thing. Hear him. So the whole point of the matter the whole reasoning for this is to show these guys hey you heard the law you heard the prophets now hear the Christ Jesus all right and that's and that's the way I see it so uh, because these things are essential, are they not? I mean, the, you got the law, the prophets, and you got the truth of Jesus Christ. And I wonder if I could go further into that. But I, I sort of hope that right there sort of shines a light on what's happening in that situation in Matthew 17, Mark 9, Luke 9. Right, so it's important to hear the law, to hear the prophets, let's do it this way, and to hear the Lord Jesus Christ. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Right. So we see this term or phrase mentioned a number of times about the law and the prophets. All right, so you hear the law, you hear the prophets, now God is saying, now listen to my son, Jesus. All right. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Again, Moses representing the law and Elijah representing the prophets. For all the prophets in the law prophesied until John. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Okay, so I think this is sufficient, right? That we're seeing Moses and the law, the prophets, and Elijah simply representing the prophets. And why was Elijah so important uh, in this? conversation if you will is because Elijah is the one it represented by John so John came and prepared the way for the Lord Jesus Christ and his uh, if you will earthly ministry all right so once John came baptizing he was leading the way and so on and so forth so and of course they have after having that conversation they understood that John was uh, Elijah right right there it is okay 
And then the disciples understood that he spake unto them, John the Baptist. Okay, so of course, John at this point had already had his head cut off. See, Matthew 14, and she being before instructed of her mother said, Give me here, John the Baptist had in a charger. Okay, so what an evil, wicked, you know what, huh? All right, anyways. I just want to share that with you. I think that's a great question and a great comment. Richie, I, I, I hope I made it simple to understand. God forbid I made it more confusing. But in the context of this conversation, they are uh, appearing to them to show them that, hey, you guys... You listened to the law. You listened to the prophets. Now, listen to Jesus. Right? That's how I see it. Let me know what you think.